Hello and welcome to the next episode of Java Games Programming. I'm your host Zan from Zan's Gaming and in this tutorial we'll be continuing on with Snakes and Ladders, the game we created last week. Uh, more particularly in this week's tutorial I'll be going over three uh, updates I made to the game. So the first of them is actually implementing user interaction in the game. If you recall last week the way we played the game we just pressed play and it played all the way through on its own. So now we actually have user interaction. We even have user power-ups, so if you land on a power-up, your next turn you get to roll two d6s. And then uh, disadvantage, where if you land on a disadvantage on your next turn, you get to uh, roll two d6s and then take the lower value. So, let's get started. The first update is fairly straightforward and it's limited to a single class, or rather even a single method. This is our player class, as we see here, and we have to update the take turn method in order to include user interaction. And the way we do this is here, uh, the code itself is highlighted. Uh, we initialize a scanner. We prompt the user for some kind of input. We then take the input and convert it to a numeric value. We take each of, the way we do this is we take each character in the input. Uh, we calculate its, uh, uh, its corresponding in integer value, so based on the ASCII table, which you should be seeing on the screen right now. And we add them all up together. At the end, we take a modulus 10, and then if it's zero, we just uh, set the value to one. So at the end, we have a value between one and nine based on the user's input. And what we do is when we're actually rolling the die, we use our randomizer, we throw away these values, and then we take the next value. So if uh, based on the input, we calculate the value to be, let's say four, um, we will roll the die four times, ignore those values, and then take the fifth die to be our next value. And we'll actually get to see this when we run the game at the end of this tutorial. The second update is uh, power-ups uh, and third update uh, disadvantage, and they work very similarly. What I did was I updated the board, as you see here, uh, to include certain features. So some of these pieces now have a star symbol. These are the locations of the power-ups. So this is what allows you to roll a 2d6 on your next turn. And then we have these lightning symbols in red here, um, and these are your disadvantages. Now, of course, this is the same image we used last time as our source. I just updated uh, the image itself to show the location of power-ups and disadvantages. To reflect this, we have our board class. Um, we have uh, two new variables, two new arrays, disadvantages and power-ups. Now, notice that these are one-dimensional arrays, and that's because they don't have an endpoint. They just have a start point, so they're a bit different than snakes and ladders themselves. When we have our uh, constructor, we also want to initialize these. So once again, I created a different method for them. And there you down here. We have five power-ups, five disadvantages, and these are their locations corresponding to the board. Um, and then when we are actually doing a turn, if you recall, so this was the move player. Um, we would first check if the player lands on a snake or if the player lands on a ladder. If neither of the case, then we also want to check does the player land on a power-up or a disadvantage. And here we go to uh, just iterate through the list. I'm only iterating to num power-ups because there are five of each. If there were a different number of uh, power-ups than the number of disadvantages, then we would want to have two different for loops for them. But since I know that they are always the same number, uh, we can do a single loop counter. Then we check does the position equal the power uh, the power up in location. If it is, then we say player dot uh, earn power up. And we, once you go back to the player class, I'll show you how that's being done. And then uh, same here, we have uh, if then we also check if it's on a disadvantage. And then you say player dot earn disadvantage. I noted this is an if and an else if, so it can be either or. Um, and that's because based on the image, you don't have a power up and a disadvantage on the same turn or on the same position. So going back to our player class, we have uh, two new instance variables, uh, boolean type, there's has power up and has disadvantage. Um, the two methods here, uh, earn power up and earn disadvantage, and these just set this uh, instance variable to true and print out a message saying that the name has, uh, the player has earned a power up or the plane ha player has disadvantage. We also need to update our take turn method in this case so that uh, we want to use these um, power-ups and disadvantages appropriately. Now, once we actually want to 
do the roll. So this is after the user interaction and throwing away the die, uh, the first valid rolls. You check if the player has the power up. If they do, then the roll value is the equivalent to rolling two d6s. So you roll die dot roll d6 and plus die to roll d6 again. And then we said has power up equals false because they've used it. And um, you say that we are using the power up. Similarly, with a disadvantage, uh, we roll the two d6s first and second. So we don't add them together because we're trying to find the lower value. We say if the first value rolled is greater than the second value, then our roll value is the second because that one is lower. Otherwise, our roll value is first, which is the greater. And that's uh, and then also we said disadvantage to false because the user has used it, and then um, you know print out that statement. If the player doesn't have a power up or a disadvantage, um, we just roll normally. And then we say, you know, the player, whatever they rolled, and we return the roll value. And here we have the three updates we have made to the game. They're fairly straightforward, and they allow us to, and they change the game quite a bit. So let's go back to our snakes and ladders. And if we actually start playing it, oops, have the console, so let's just do two players. So player zero's turn. So they can put in anything here. So and this is going to get translated into some kind of numeric value between 1 and uh, one and 9. And so uh, they threw away those uh, first rolls, and then P0 ends up in the roll of 5. Updated location right here. Now P1's turn. Uh, fairly straightforward. So P1 landed a 4. Goes all the way up to 14. So this is where they are. And we don't necessarily need to put in a value. Uh, so we can just do, just hold, enter, and then this will just take it until the game ends. This is because uh, when we are actually looking in for the value, uh, let's see where the player go. So we take uh, the user's input, and we just add things together. If there's nothing to add, then this val is equal to zero, and then we just add val equals to one, we throw away the first die, roll, and then use the second one. Okay, um, so let's go back to the game. Let's see if in this case if we actually had a power up or a disadvantage. So let's just search for power up. Okay, so on this turn, um, P1 has earned a power up. Let's see where P1 is. I'll see P0. And this is the hard part, trying to find out where the where the player is. So let's see if we can do P1. Here they are. So P1's right here. Um, and they have a power up. OK. Um, so on the next P1's turn, uh, they're using the power up. They rolled two dice and then ended up rolling a six. And so this was P1 at what? Where were they before? This was at. Uh, 50 and right here same thing with the disadvantage here p0 rolled the disadvantage let's find p0 here it is um, and then on the next turn uh, p0 turn using disadvantage and you end up rolling a 1 so this was at uh, 75 Hmm, that is a bit strange. Uh, thought P0, oh sorry, yeah, P0 was at uh, 76 and then they end up at, uh, you know, just one ahead, 77. So here we have our three updates to the game. Fairly straightforward, but they do change the dimensions a bit, especially the part about interacting with the user because, you know, as a user we see a great significant difference there. And between adding the power ups and a disadvantage changes the game mechanics uh, a bit. So um, here we have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, please do leave a thumbs up and a subscribe so that these videos can get more exposure and more viewable for other other people. If you have suggestions for other topics for me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. And um, see you next time.